Hi, this is Keith Ward with Visual Studio Magazine, and joining me right now was keynote speaker, uh, Microsoft Watcher, ZDNet, and Redmond Magazine columnist, Mary Jo Foley. Mary Jo, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Keith. So um, let's start in with the announcements that our audience is going to be most interested in last week, and uh, that was the Visual Studio uh, 2013. Um, what about that announcement, what about that product sort of uh, stuck out to you is something that you think is going to excite developers? Well, I was really interested in the Visual Studio Online piece of that announcement, um, partially because it was brand new. We didn't really know anything about it. Um, I was very interested in Monaco, the codename Monaco, which is a subset of Visual Studio technologies available in any modern browser. So that's pretty cool. It's going to let uh, developers do things like um, some basic editing to Azure websites. Uh, there are going to be some other potential new applications coming from that technology as well that we don't even know yet. Uh, but the idea is this is the cloud complement to the Visual Studio IDE. So very exciting because Microsoft has said before, every product in their portfolio is going to have a cloud complement. And this is what's going to be the cloud complement to Visual Studio. Now, the, the readers that, uh, that are contacting you, that are emailing you, what was their reaction to Monaco and Visual Studio Online and this whole cloud idea? I know a lot of the developers I talk to are still very concerned about security and about their code mm -hmm. living somewhere else. Um, are they excited about it from what you can tell? I think they're intrigued, for sure. Um, I, I think they haven't really thought through all the implications yet of it. But just the idea that uh, you'll be able to do things, say say you're away from your, your regular desk uh, where you have your Visual Studio application installed, but you need to make a quick edit or do something to the code on the fly. Uh, just the idea of that flexibility, that, that uh, mobility, and the fact that you can do it in not just IE, but any modern browser, including Chrome, Firefox and Safari is very interesting to people because that's so not typically a Microsoft kind of strategy. So I think they're kind of thinking through the implications, waiting to see how they might use that technology. They can kick the tires on the preview now uh, for Azure websites. And I'm, I think I and a lot of my readers are interested in what other products that Microsoft are going to make use of that. Right. Now, it was interesting also, I thought when, uh, when Visual Studio 2013 came out that it was only a year for a major upgrade from 2012. Now that hasn't been the case for any of the releases really for Visual Studio. Is this a new paradigm for Microsoft? Is this the way it is going to be going forward? Um, is it a Visual Studio specific thing? What, what do you think about the fact that it's just a year between major releases? I think it's amazing, actually. I, I don't think Microsoft's getting enough credit for that right now. Uh, Visual Studio had four updates in the past year from Visual Stu Studio 2012. Um, that is unprecedented. It's all, uh, just about every quarter they had an update. And, you know, some of them were more minor than others, but they were all pretty interesting updates. Um, and I think that's what we're going to see as a new pattern going forward. I think now the Visual Studio 2013 is out. There'll be probably another set of quarterly updates in this coming year. And I think a n number of other teams at Microsoft may be watching Visual Studio to see how this goes and how people can digest this much quicker set of updates uh, and how much pushback or not that there is. So, um, you know, Windows had one update uh, in the past 12 months, which is still pretty aggressive for them uh, because they were on every two to three year schedule before that. So I, I think the the watchword is going to be quicker updates across all of the product lines at Microsoft, not just Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, some of the questions during uh, after your your keynote discussion um, tonight were around Silverlight mm -hmm. and the fact that it seems to be going away. There are also a number of developers that I've talked to uh, who are wondering if .NET could be going the same way hmm. as Silverlight. Um, they're wondering if they are, if they're stuck in a technology that's not moving forward that Microsoft may be moving away from. One example of that is JavaScript and TypeScript. Now it's in the IDE, and in fact, TypeScript builds on top of JavaScript, but TypeScript is a Microsoft technology. Is Microsoft, well, let me ask it this way, are .NET developers right to be anxious or worried at this mm -hmm. point? If you had asked me this two years ago, I would have said, yes, they're very right to be anxious. But in the past couple of years, we've seen Microsoft shift a little bit about um, their attitudes towards the .NET development community. I think they were hoping 
that they could convince their longtime constituents in the developer world that they should go HTML, JavaScript, um, CSS. When that didn't really happen, and most of the Windows 8 apps for the Windows Store were developed in C Sharp, I think Microsoft kind of went back and looked at this and said, hey, do we really want to antagonize this constituency? Or do we need them? And I think they decided they needed them. So I, I haven't heard anything like .NET is going completely away anytime soon. Um, I think the fact that at last week's uh, Visual Studio 2013 launch, there was a lot of fanfare around Microsoft and Xamarin's announcement, uh, which is going to allow the C Sharp and F Sharp developers to write applications for iOS and Android. I think that's another sign that Microsoft's not saying, hey, let's abandon .NET. I think that instead they're trying to rethink how they can bring the .NET developers uh, kind of into the uh, more, more modern post PC, quote unquote, era and have them develop using .NET for other platforms. Right, sure. All right, let's talk briefly now about Windows 8, Windows Phone 8. And where my main question for you in that is, developers, .NET developers, they want to see that this is going to be a legitimate ecosystem going forward. They want to see that there's market share there that's going to encourage them uh, to build apps for, for these platforms. Do you see that happening? Are we seeing an upward trend with Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8? We are seeing an upward trend. Um, I always joke and say, I'm one of the 4%. So in the US, there's 4% of all um, phone users, smartphone users are Windows Phone now. It's better, last year it was 3%. Uh, it's very slow going here in the US for Windows Phone, but outside the US, I think a lot of us uh, who are based here forget, there, there is quite a bit of traction for Windows Phone in a lot of other countries, especially places like Israel, India, the UK, um, and a lot of these places, it's now double digit growth. I even, I even heard recently in, in uh, Latin America, I believe it's either the number one or the number two mm -hmm. platform, believe it or not. So, you know, I think we have to look at the, at the whole international ecosystem when we're thinking about is it successful or not successful. Uh, on Windows 8, you know, we're starting to see more traction there. Uh, it's very slow and steady growth, but I think Windows 8.1 was very much a much needed shot in the arm for Windows 8. It undoes some of the less popular uh, decisions that Microsoft made, uh, brings back the start button, allows users to boot straight to the desktop, allows people to see a view of all of their apps just by scrolling down. So I, they did a lot of things that were meant to make Windows 8 a little bit more palatable, especially to the business community, and I think that's going to be goodness. Um, and I think coupled, coupled with the new crop of uh, hardware that's coming out this holiday, more touch laptops, more touch tablets, I think it, you, we're going to see traction start to gain a little bit quicker there too. Thank you.